So please join me in chanting the uh, the homage, refuges, and precepts. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tamang Saranang Gachami Sangang Saranang Gachami Duty Ampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Duti ampi damam sarnang gachami. Duti ampi sangang sarnang gachami. Tati ampi budang sarnang gachami. Tati ampi damang sarnang gachami. Tati ampi sangang saranang gachami. Panati pata veramani sikapadam samadiyami. Adina dana veramani sikapadam samadiyami. Kamesu mi chachara veramani sikapadam Samadhyami Musawada Veramani Sikapadam Samadhyami Sura Maria Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sikapadam Samadhyami Ida misila maga fala nyanasa pachayo hotu. Sadu, 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 anumodami. I, in the, all the technical glitches. I forgot to take out my bell, so I'm going to just do that now. As uh, most of you know, I think um, perhaps there's a, a new person here, not sure, um, but we have been working our way through the Satipatthana Sutta, the Four Establishments of Mindfulness, um, a seminal discourse 
of the Buddha um, in this uh, early Buddhist tradition. And, um, and so we're, we're coming to the, the end of the, um, the fourth chapter, uh, working through or exploring uh, the, uh, the awakening factors, the seven awakening factors. Um, and so, um, last week, Kay was present, and she, or they, sorry, they spoke about, uh, the, the, the awakening factor of joy, or rapture, pity, and, uh, and then the week before, I was also away, and Cynthia, who, thank you, Cynthia, uh, discussed uh, and explored with you the uh, awakening factor of uh, virya, energy, energy. and um, and then uh, so and then before that we talked about uh, investigation and 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 mindfulness um, and uh, and so uh, these these awakening factors are factors that we all we all have the 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 seeds we all have these factors present uh, within our mind stream within our being and we can cultivate them uh, and together they they really support our practice to become free of suffering. To awaken in our lives, to to live more and more fully from wisdom and compassion, um, to participate beneficially for all beings in this web of life of which we are a part, uh, this interdependent, these interdependent lives that we uh, that we live um, and. Uh, participate in moment by moment, and so and so. This is how we we cultivate these awakening factors: is moment by moment, uh, and and in these uh, explorations of the awakening factors, they're really uh, how to uh, not only cultivate them, but bring them to a degree of fullness that really supports us on the path. And, and we come to understand what helps them to arise. Like, so what, what helps the first awakening factor, mindfulness, to arise? You know? Well, it can be by practicing it, first of all, um, by uh, setting up conditions in our lives to cultivate it, to practice it in a formal practice and also in an informal practice. So all of us have done this to a certain extent, uh, bringing, remembering, you know, to be mindful and, and noticing that as we cultivate it, mindfulness arises, perhaps... Uh, you know, and we might notice, oh, I just, I haven't been very mindful for the last, whatever, 15 minutes or hour or, or several hours. And then, and then that remembering can help us to arrive, to be present in the moment without judgment, with kindness, with openness, with sensitivity. With receptivity, and so on, and so we um, we cultivate these qualities. And uh, and today I'm going to talk about tranquility and concentration, or collectedness. So um, so tranquility or calmness. is something that we've been cultivating right from 
the start as we have been exploring this discourse. Uh, Just coming to the breath, coming to the body, noticing when the body is contracted, is when there's a an, an energy of anxiety or 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 restlessness or um, or contraction, and just inviting the body with you know a simple breath. <sighs> Relax. <laughs> You know, and it's it's a kindness. It's a it it it's, it's an attitude of kindness, and acceptance, and awareness, with which we do this. You know, we we recognize that the body is perhaps not tranquil, not calm, and and so without judgment, with skill, with kindness, we can invite the body to calm down. And we can also invite the mind to calm down. We can notice the thoughts are going bzz, bzz, bzz all all around and and that we're going over and over ruminating. You know, I noticed that last night when I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and my mind was going around and round about something and I wasn't falling asleep. And so I invited the body to relax. I invited the mind to calm down. And, and because, because I recognized it, that the mind was buzzing around something, and uh, my new dog, as a matter of fact, <laughs> training my new dog and... and getting to know her personality, and my mind was just buzzing around thinking about her. Jody, Jody is her name. And, uh, and so she, uh, so, so I, you know, I just thought, just, okay, just let it go. Come back, breathe, relax, relax the body. So recognizing the, the, that calmness, tranquility was not present in the body and in the mind. That's, that's the first part of cultivating it. And then inviting calmness, tranquility to the body and that's really what's most essential because it's most accessible and it's, uh, we can tune into it and, and we can, we can um, invite those places of tension by bringing a mindful kind of openness to how we are present in the body we can invite those places of contraction and agitation to release and to let go. And that is, sets a foundation for the mind to begin to let go as well. And then bringing that recognition and the intention and the willingness to let go of the thoughts. So it takes a certain insight, a certain wisdom to know that ruminating about the story, whatever the story it is, is not is is just creating suffering, is perpetuating the agitation. So that's skill, that's insight, uh, that's practice, and and say and just inviting the mind to let go. So, inviting the mind to let go is is the skill of renunciation to say, this is not serving me. Um, This is creating suffering and stress. And so, so there's an intention 
to let go. And really, um, one of my teachers uh, once said that renunciation is very linked to, co- to self-compassion. That we, we let go because we care about our own well-being and happiness. And so, you know, we don't necessarily link the word renunciation. Usually we think, well, I, I'm letting go of something I want, right? That's not good for me. But actually renunciation arises with the understanding, with the insight that ha- that's not the direction of happiness, you know. Happiness is not that way. Happiness is another way of, of letting go of this compulsive mind turning over and over and over the story. So, so tranquility, you know, each of these awakening factors is kind of, we, we can cultivate them separately, but they also have a certain unfolding in which one opens up uh, into the next one. And uh, tranquility uh, comes after joy um, and or happiness. Uh, there are different flavors of, of joy and happiness. Um, so what's named in the awakening factors is pity. Um, uh, so which is sometimes translated rapture. But we can think of them together uh, as you know, a, a, a sense of, of well-being, a sense of uh, happiness, joy, um, enjoyment, and, and really the, what, gives, what, what opens up to joy is uh, mindfulness and investigation and, and energy which help us to let go of the hindrances. The hindrances are these energies that keep us caught up in this, these ruminations, these um, patterns of wanting and, and pushing away and, and uh, being obsessed with or caught up in things that really don't serve our happiness. And so, and so these, the first three, mindfulness, investigation, energy, energy being, you know, the persistence, the consistency with which we investigate and, um, and release our, or these, these tendencies of mind which create unhappiness. So, so joy uh, is is fed by, is nourished by um, the first three awakening factors and joy lays the groundwork for calmness and tranquility and and well-being because because when we're happy, when we feel content, uh, when we're not struggling within ourselves, when we don't feel fractured and conflicted, uh, driven, there is this foundation, kind of a, this, this, this happiness that's available to us. This is one of Thich Nhat Hanh's wonderful sayings, you know, happiness is available, help yourself. And, um, and so this happiness is, is something that, yeah, is available. Um, the uh, venerable Analyo talks so much about how 
the simple showing up fully in the present moment with mindfulness, sati, uh, there's a subtle joy just when we can show up mindfully, which means we're not preferring this or that or wanting this or that to be different. Uh, we're, we're open, we're present in our lives. Uh, there's a subtle joy, and this gives rise to this tranquility, a beautiful quality of mind in which the mind feels settled, the body feels settled, And even if we only experience this quality of tranquility for a moment, it is onward leading because that calmness is part of how we experience freedom. The calmness helps us to feel grounded, ease, connected. All of these qualities arise interdependently. And then the the calmness of mind that we can experience in the unfolding of the awakening factors then gives rise or lays the groundwork for concentration or collectedness of mind. So the word samadhi in Pali has this sense of coming together, so the mind gathering together. And um, so I prefer the word collectedness, um, which Analio also uses uh, uh, frequently, um, because I... I had a misunderstanding of concentration early on in my practice, and it was a very narrow understanding of concentration. Like, I thought I had to exclude everything and, and kind of just pinpoint my mind very one-pointedly, um, which um, cultivated a lot of energy, but also uh, it bypassed uh, a lot of... Uh, patterns that created suffering in my life. And so I just had this this practice of concentrating my mind and excluding a kind of a one-pointed concentration which, which excluded and, and kind of kept on the back burner a lot of um, patterns of suffering that eventually needed to be addressed uh, in a more inclusive practice. So collectedness is that that uh, we can be at one with, we can have a sense of uh, being suffused with this presence, this mindfulness, this, this quality of awareness. It's like uh, an image that I love about... Um, the concentrated or collected mind is, is the, um, the kneading of flour. And the Buddha said, just as you, you add the oil and the, the water or whatever wet ingredients you add to flour and you gather it in and you knead it and it work you work it through so any of you have who have ever made bread or seen bread being made being kneaded um, or or even made some kind of uh, cake or something and you you stir the all the ingredients together and it becomes a consistent texture and so our our awareness becomes suffused uh, throughout the whole body-mind with um, this, this presence, this stability of mind, that the mind isn't uh, 
bouncing around or, or easily um, distracted, drawn away, uh, that, that there's, a, there's a real stability to that quality of attention. Uh, and so that is the awakening factor of collectedness of mind. And, and within this uh, collectedness of, of mind, of samadhi, you know, we may feel uh, joy. Um, we, we, investigation may arise if something uh, comes up, a, a something, a thought or a, a, um, a painful sensation. Uh, and, and so all the, these other awakening factors may be alive and working within our awareness. Um, and there's a kind of um, a stability to that, which then deepens uh, into equanimity, um, which I'll talk about next week. That, that will be the final. And there's equanimity. Equanimity, or uh, in this context, uh, Venerable Analio uses the word equipoise for this unshakable balance of mind. Um, uh, is uh, is the final of the awakening factors, and it's said to be, you know, like the threshold to awakening. Um, and so, all of these. Um, all of these factors that we're talking about, these beautiful, beautiful factors that we can cultivate are, um, are conditioned. You know, they're developments of mind. Um, and, and just as we can develop many skills, uh, we can learn to play an instrument, we can develop skills as a, as a therapist or a, an artist. And, and, and in this dimension, the spiritual dimension, which is, I think, the most holistic uh, way to develop ourselves, we, uh, we develop ourselves to, uh, it, with these qualities. And, uh, and so... These are conditioning which give rise to the unconditioned. Um, and, and sort of opening up to the unconditioned is something that can happen in a moment. Um, and um, and it, it can change our perspective on ourselves and our lives. Um, and then we go on living our lives um, with, you know, the... The, the insight and understanding that uh, that awakening gives rise to um, and uh, and all of these beautiful awakening qualities uh, also help to to shape us and 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 make us into uh, the kinds of people that we want to be, the kinds of, of beings that we, the, to, to, to be a blessing in the world, to be a blessing in our, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our places of work, and uh, uh, in, a, in every way that we engage. Um, and we can more and more uh, come to embody these, and um, yeah, and, and tranquility and and collectedness of mind are, you know, sometimes you just you know you meet somebody and there's a quality about them that you know they're settled, they they're non-reactive, they they're uh, they're present, you know, all of these are. Uh, awakening factors, and uh, and they, and we we can all, to whatever extent, uh, 
any extent is, is beautiful, is a gift, uh, we can bring these qualities into the world and, um, and be that presence. So, um, so let's take a moment now to um, release your posture if you'd like and we're going to move into a, a sitting meditation. And uh, so I'll, I'll guide us into a, um, a practice of tranquility and, and calmness. So just taking a moment. And please, uh, for those of you at home, please, um, place yourself in relation to the computer in whatever way you like, turn it off or, or face away from it, um, whatever's comfortable for you. So I invite you to um, begin by feeling the support of the earth, uh, the stillness of the earth, supporting the stillness of the body. So the body doesn't have to be perfectly still, it doesn't have to be rigidly still but a quality of stillness, inviting that quality of stillness, of settledness into the body. And perhaps an entryway to that sense of stillness is touching into the earthiness, the earth quality of the body. body sitting like a mountain, or lying down, lying down like a gentle hill, if that is your posture, or standing like a tree. Feeling the breath, moving through the body, the body breathing itself. Letting the breath rise and fall naturally. You may notice the breath in a particular place in the body. Perhaps the nostrils or the or the chest or the belly.
And let your focus in that particular place be soft and gentle, inviting the breath to just be however it is, <laughs> to relax and, and let the breath be deep or shallow, rough or smooth. And and if it feels supportive to you, to gradually open up your sense of presence and awareness in the body, your focus of attention, to include the whole body. A sense of the whole body breathing. And however this is experienced for you is fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be awareness in every little centimeter of the body. Just you might experience it as sensation in the body, awareness of the whole surface of the body and the inner sensation of the body. You might experience it as a kind of luminosity in the body. And letting the breath be still in your awareness, but kind of peripherally. Feeling the whole rising and falling in the whole body, maybe even a sense of the skin breathing. And with this sense of inhabiting the whole body with kindness, with appreciation, awareness, We may notice if the body is contracted in some place. And kindly bringing mindfulness, perhaps lightly, gently to that particular place, or just with that sense of spaciousness of the whole body awareness, inviting that contraction to let go, maybe just a little bit. A sense of, it's okay, you don't need to hold on. You don't need to tighten yourself in self-protection. arrive fully in this moment. Arrive fully and safely 
in this moment because we are supported by our own self-care, our own self-kindness, our own presence to the heart. through our cultivation of dharma. And feeling the well-being, contentment that supports this calmness to whatever extent that experience is present and without judgment just noticing to what extent there is calmness and appreciating that we cultivate these qualities by recognizing them and recognizing how and understanding how They arose and giving attention to them so they will continue. What we give attention to is what we're cultivating. And gathering our awareness into the body, into presence in the body, an embodied awareness.
As we come to the end of our formal practice, I invite you to touch the moments of clarity, moments of tranquility, collectedness, joy, energy, mindfulness that have arisen in your practice. And with appreciation for how they nourish our heart, mind, being, we can gather the blessings of these uh, moments, these insights, and dedicate them to the benefit of the world. Now, perhaps there's somebody in your life or some people that you may not personally know but know of who um, perhaps are struggling or suffering in some way or, or perhaps are thriving uh, in a beautiful way and you wish them to, you appreciate that and, wish, and want to bring the intention, may you continue to thrive and experience joy in your life. So dedicating the blessings, the merit of our practice to all beings, May the blessings, the merit of our practice and our lives serve and support the happiness, well-being and liberation of all beings. <laughs>